Welcome back to Safas Unscripted, episode 144. Brevan, we've got a lot to talk about. Unfortunately, it's just the two of us. Uh, Brett's actually playing some cricket, right? I was surprised to hear the guys playing cricket, but I keep forgetting that we don't live in the same place. When it's raining here, it's not raining there. And it's steaming down, yeah? Cape Town's not been Cape Towning in 2024. But you guys so, have like, what, 75 kilometers per hour winds? What's going on? Yeah, weird. It's super weird this year. Just uh, weird weather behavior. I mean, obviously, look, I know a lot of places may experience higher winds than that but for joburg that is very unusual so something new to us but yeah otherwise i'm all well ready to chat some ruggers i think there's a lot of nice talking points um a lot and some not so good yeah, ones there's one uh, very sad talking point Brevan. yeah absolutely yeah. i agree with you even though the person that came in i'm still devastated i can't lie um but yeah otherwise how are you how are you doing quickly before we get into it yeah, all good, all good, all good. Uh, let's let's chat about it. Let's let's stop be- cool. beating around the bush. We'll go into it, right? We'll talk about the news first before we go into the URC of of this week and uh, moving into the international season once again. Obviously, major news. I was at the rugby game yesterday um, with with Damien Willemser taken off groin injury after he scored the try. I mean, it was tears in my eyes to see Damien Willemser. In person. I mean, the guy's the best player in the world. And it's not even close. Then I also had tears in my eyes seeing Damien Willems uh, walking off the field. And I went I went out last night. Obviously, bro, weekends are for the drinks, right? So I went out. I got to I got to a certain certain bar and the whole Stormers team is there. So I got like some, some inside info of someone that told me last night already, listen, the guy, don't expect to see him for... <laughs> For the spring box anytime soon so yeah it's it's obviously heartbreaking we'll, we'll talk about cameron and come in a, in a second but yeah how do, how do you feel about it that news it's very sad bro i must say um like as much as i'm super happy for cameron hanukum coming in and obviously i think it's deserved um it's still i would never at the expense of damien willems uh, have done that either way um like you said that is a big loss and people still say that you know fussy can do a job and, and whatever i understand your your uh, people's theory about that fussy can still do a good job and stuff and obviously we'll back the guy but there's something about damien willems that's very special and we we missed it um this past, I think it was the Irish tests, and um, we've missed it in 2024. Yeah, this, uh, he's not played a single game in 2024. Yeah, so he's a special, special player. Um, he can create something out of nothing. He's very good at what he does. Like you said, easily. I mean, I wouldn't go as far as the best player in the world, but I would say he's one of the better players in the Springboks, and we'll miss him. Um, we'll miss him a lot. So it's it's. It's not nice. I, that's all I can really say about it. It's disappointing. I was looking forward to him finally getting three uh, three games in a row. Just, mm. you know, getting that Springbok jersey flare back. And now it can't happen, which is, you know, it's, it's not much more I can say other than I'm devastated. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah the thing is, like, I was I was excited to, to kind of see the level that each one of them brings when they get that opportunity. Because some people flourish under that opportunity of like, okay, it's, we are competing for positions. Other guys just crumble under under that sort of pressure, right? But I, I wanted to see that battle, you know, because Fussy's, Fussy's been playing good rugby. He, he, yeah. he doesn't necessarily deserve to be dropped. I made a video on, about this situation on another platform and someone in the comment section was like, I don't think Damien Willemsen deserves to, to play for the spring box. And I'm like, bro, what are you talking about? Like, why? Because he got injured. Fair, fair, right? But don't tell me it's about like talent or anything. There's still a lot of people that said Fussy had a couple of shit games for 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 the Sharks or for for the Springboks. You know, like his position there isn't secured. He's still got Villy on yeah. his back as well. And and Damien Willemse is class. He is our 15. He was our 15. What are we gonna say? A finger injury is gonna take away all his talent. It's not like he tore an ACL or an MCL or whatever. He's not gonna be the same player. When he's got a groin yeah. injury and a finger injury, he'll be yeah. fine. Yeah. Let's just hope he's back before the end of the year for the URC then. 
Yeah, I, I'd hope so. I hope it's, I mean, obviously, like you said, hearing that it, you won't see it for the Springboks probably until next year, July again, because um, you'll miss this series now. But um, I think what Brett wanted to, 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 to like for us to just bring up was also how come do you reckon they kept Damien on the field for so long after immediately scoring that try? Um, you could see he was, he was uncomfortable. And um, do you think that there was a bit of a miscommunication he wasn't, he wasn't there? He wasn't on the field for, for too much longer, right? Yeah, look, I didn't notice that it was yeah, too much longer. But yeah, um, Brent had the feeling I, that he as probably As far as I can remember, it wasn't for too much. I, I, uh, maybe I've got a distorted drunken brain, but I was like, he went <laughs> off after scoring the try. Um, well, that's how, how it felt. So I wasn't like this guy's on the field for too long or anything like that. But mm. yeah, I, I don't know. You get this, uh, you, you play rugby still, right? You get this yeah. thing where it's like, um, if, if you have a little niggle or something like that, you want to play through the pain, mm. right? Like Naturally, yeah. Yeah, so maybe he didn't think it's that deep until he like played further, and then he was like, right, "Yeah, okay, buddy, I'm done." Yeah, I mean, look, usually that is the case. Like, obviously, an adrenaline is a proper thing, you know. So when something happens, obviously you feel that little tug, and then it's like the adrenaline's still kicking in, and you know it may not seem as bad as what you think, and so it's maybe one of those situations. But look, at the end of the day, it. It's not the end of the world, but it's a big loss. And I'll continue to say that because, I mean, that guy brings so much to the Springboks. It's not even like, like I don't think people realize how important he is. Um, but hopefully he can be fit. I uh, have a fit yep. 2025, you know. He, he looks like he's, he's one of those guys that, that brings vibes off the field as well, which is obviously important for, for team spirit and it gets the guys together. Um, I yeah. wouldn't be surprised if he's in the in the leadership group as well. Um, mm. But anyway, enough of the negativity. Obviously, I hate n knowing that that Damien is injured and that he won't represent the box for in 2025. I mean, he's missed 10 games now, which is obviously like he could be one of the most capped Springboks ever because he started playing for us when, when he was pretty young. But now like a year has been taken off. So yeah. I don't know. But anyway. Anyway, let's move on to, to Cameron Hanukum. It's your boy. We've all been calling for him. What needs to happen for him to secure the spot that he doesn't play for Wales? Was this call up enough or should he actually be in the team sheet? Should he run out onto the field? What needs to happen for that? To be honest, I think he'll be very excited by this opportunity. Um, I obviously don't expect him to get much game time, if any. Um, because obviously, I think, I'll think he'll make a, a, a appearance I mean, somewhere. I think a, a, a Welsh appearance would be ideal. I think that just, would be just writing, showing them the bad <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think giving him game time is important, also, in my opinion. I think that Welsh game is perfect for him, let him play mm -hmm. at least one game on the tour. Um, but overall, I think he's good enough to to play in that in that Springbok team, um, whether it be in yeah. any of the tests. But, Riven, currently, he, he might even be good enough to start. Yeah, I'm not even joking. Like, obviously, Rusty's going to want to go with trusted um, trusted guys. We know he wants to win this uh, these three games. He doesn't want to lose any, so he'll go with his his trusted. But I still think. He, he can fit in there somewhere. Even, I personally, a point you raised um, when we chatted about Hanukkah not making it, but you said he can play that six-flank role, for example. I, I think he can, right? Because if you think, if you look at um, well, what he does... Peter Steff actually plays the six-flank, right? So, yeah, or, or, so, so or, or Hanukkah will just so play seven. seven, which he can do, which he yeah, is. So, but the reason I say that is he's very good at fetching. He's good yeah. around the park. He carries well. He may not have the build as your typical Manku van Staden, Quacker Smith, etc. But he still does the job that they do. It's just maybe a bit different. You can even use him in lineouts, for example. So, Revan, I, I think, think he, he, can... he should start straight away. And I tell you, I, th I think he fits into our team perfectly. It's it's the missing piece of the puzzle. Now, I love Kubis Not uh, Yes, Kubis 
Jasper Visa. Yeah, the bra- my yeah. bad, my bad, my bad. <laughs> yeah, I love Jasper Visa. I think he's a sensational player, right? But if you think, what's the missing piece in South Africa's puzzle? And we've always spoke about it. Where's our breakdown th- breakdown threat? We've got three fetches on the bench. We don't have anyone doing that from, from the start. We have M- Malcolm Marks, Mark van Staren, and Kwaka Smith. They all play from the bench. Well, sometimes Mark van Staren doesn't really play. Right? We can bring in Elrich Lowe to play that eight man, but he's not a feature. Okay? Because mm-hmm. Brett posed the question the other day of like, what does what does Hanukom do that Elrich do- doesn't? Well, both of them are great players, but I think Hanukom is elite at the breakdown. Great feature mm-hmm. where Elrich Lowe is not necessarily a specialist in it. Right? That's not taking away from his game. Just two different types when it comes to that. Yeah. Now imagine if you have Sia Kulisi, Peter Steff to tackle, and Cameron Hanukom as your eighth man. He can be the fetcher of the team. And then you replace that. Then you bring on Malcolm Marks and Alrich Lowe and then um, Kwaha Smith. Then you still have your two fetchers on the field. Cameron Hanukom can go off, go, go undress, go get rested up or whatever for the next game. There you go. Mm. I think that's the perfect missing piece to the puzzle. And I love Jasper, the way that he carries, he's hard, he's at the breakdowns and stuff. It's not a feature. We don't have that feature in the starting lineup. Cameron yeah. would be perfect for that. I agree. Um, I, I, I'm i on the same page as you. I completely agree. Um, whether that that's happens... why we wanted to start Guaja, right? Because we needed a feature from the start. Yeah. But then he just didn't do the job. Cameron Anakum mm. is a lot bigger, a lot stronger. He can do it. Good. And then you exactly. bring on Kwaha. Imagine taking off Cameron Anakul. Like, you had to deal with that monster. And then you bring on Kwaha. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> scary me. thought. But, like, yeah. Um, the English will be shitting it. Yeah. Look, I, I, I don't know if that will happen. Obviously, I'd love for that to happen. But otherwise, I think it's a good move. I think he had to be called up eventually, somehow, somewhere. And I just had this feeling... I don't think it would be for Damien Willems at fullback, but I had this okay. feeling that there was going to be an injury and Hanukkah was going to make his way into this team during the November internationals, just because we've seen this happen before for players, you know. Um, Ron Nokia one got called up due to injuries. He's taken his opportunity. And these types of players, like they're on the fringe and they get given this opportunity by an injury, which is unfortunate, but they take it. And I think this is perfect for Hanukkah to take it. And all we can do is hope that he... he, he he can do his best and, you know, deliver what we know he can. So, yeah, excited for I guy. kind of just hope it's not one of those scenarios w- that we saw with, uh, what's it, Niklas Janssen van Rensburg, where, like, gets yeah. pulled into the team and he's just, like, could just as well be a, bo- a water boy. Um, yeah, ho- yeah, hopefully it's not one of those situations, right? Because we all know Janssen van Rensburg, he was about a 10th choice lock. Yeah. And our other locks were, were doing well. So it wasn't necessarily necessary for him to to, to play. But with yeah. Cameron Hanukkah, we know what this guy offers. We've seen it, right? And you want to give him that opportunity to go out there and flourish. I mean, how young is Cameron Hanukkah? 22. 22? That's yeah. ridiculous. Get He's him in that box yeah. as soon as possible. Let him go and flourish. I mean, this, yeah. this guy will be a monster for South Africa. I, I, I reckon... Bold, co- bold decision. He will be the ca- he will be the captain taking over from Siakulisi. That's bold. bold, 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 bold. I don't know about that, but um, damn, I'd like to see him have a little bit, little bit more of like a leadership role in the balls coming up because obviously he played his first season last year, and then now he's kind of you see him carrying his form into this year, which is great news because obviously some players drop off a bit. Um, Are you throwing so yeah, the other right? No, no, I still think Ivan <laughs> Rose is a great player. And I don't think his form necessarily dropped off. I just think he had things to fix with his mental side of the game, which I think he's doing. Um, obviously, injuries yeah. sucks. But, um, yeah. yeah, look, um, we'll see. We'll see. But um, he needs to take his opportunity because, as we know, some players, they come into that box jersey and they just don't necessarily perform the way we know they can. And then kind of you, you lose your opportunity, which isn't ideal. But um, yeah, he's still young, and I'm sure he will rack up a few good amounts of tests for the Springboks. Yeah, fingers crossed. Just, just the final thing on, on Anukum. I hope it's not the same situation as, as we saw with, with Ivan Ruiz. I know I was just taking the piss with, with the Ivan Ruiz mm-hmm. comment, right? But we all know what Ivan can do. Um, I do believe Anukum is a bit better. He's a bit more well rounded, like he offers you a bit more all over the park um, yeah. than Ivan. 
in, in my opinion, right? But I hope it's not one of those situations where Rice is like so fixed on, I want to play Visa and Visa only, that Cameron yeah. Hanekom probably gets one one game in eight and he tries to yeah. overdo it, like like we've seen with Ivan Rus. He's never got a run of games. He's never done anything like that. Uh, then, then they try and try and overcomplicate it, right? And they try and o- over impress, and then they just shut the bed. And I hope it's mm. not one of those situations for Cameron Anacom. I want to see him get a run, need a run of games. We saw Ruan Orkia didn't come in, and all of a sudden, first game, just like uh, maybe, maybe he had he had a good performance, but he got back and he just got better and better and better and better, right? And yeah. you need that from every every single guy. Like it's a different thing coming from the training pitch into into the squad and then having to perform from game one so yeah hopefully next season he can he can be in the in the squad from from the italy games those type of things throughout the the, year hopefully this is his time to shine now 100 percent, i agree i agree you want to move on to to your c yeah let's do it some interesting things happened in these this week jam (laughs) yeah so yeah let's chat well let's let's start off with your team they played on friday night yeah. I mean, bad weather, you could say, but I mean, bad performance. Bad weather, yeah. bad performance. Got the victory. Like, you'll take that is a proper, proper smash and grab. Mm. So, I couldn't watch it live because I, I had a function that I had to attend and um, I, there was no TVs to even watch it there or anything like that. But um, so I missed the game. And I just was checking the scores and stuff and I check it like 68, 69 minutes. It's 12 3 2 to um, Benetton and I'm like okay well this is over great stuff it's another bulls bottle job on tour um and again I would have said why the road this, this would team. have been a proper bottle job a proper yeah, one agreed agreed and um and then <laughs> I message on the group and I'm like uh yeah no I'm, I'm done with this really blah 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 whatever also to my other mates I'm like yeah no bulls they 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 messed it up my mates like didn't they win question mark so I'm like, what is he talking about? So I quickly Google and I check, oh, flip, we won 17-15. And I'm like, wow, that is some other smash and grab type um, type of, you know, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. And obviously, whilst it is very bad, don't get me wrong, very poor performance. It's, it's very good as well. It's uh, And Jake said it, and I have to agree with him on this. Sometimes you have to grind wins. Sometimes it won't go your way. Yeah, and you bro, have to you grind break those wins. all day. Absolutely. So, I can't I mean, you take from, from a game like this. Now, okay, l- let me put it in perspective, right? Have you managed to watch the game? Uh, yeah. yeah. Now, I, I don't think Benetton were the better team in this game. I thought the Bulls were better, right? Because Benetton yeah. didn't look like they had any attacking threat. I thought their defense was great. I thought they disrupted the attack of, of the Bulls pretty well. But they didn't like form well, especially in the second half. Because because I, I didn't get to watch all of the first half, but I did manage to watch the full second half, right? I think I remember Benetton about twice in the Bulls like like dangerous territory, just outside the 22 from there. Yeah. But other than that, it was just pure Bulls. And then the Bulls handling errors or whatever, whatever, and then ill discipline penalty, and then Benetton just kicked it, right? But there was no yeah. real attacking threat from Benetton. That's why I'm saying it would have been a proper bottle job because yet they had all these opportunities, all these line breaks, everything. Just no points, nothing to show yeah. for it. But then obviously at the end, David Creel, once again, balls of steel, slotting it from the corner. Clutch. And you take those. You take yeah. those all day. I you mean, have to take those, you know, because... A, f- a couple seasons ago, we all losing those games, you know, um, those games on tour. We just aren't yeah. finding anything. And Benetton had your number before. Yeah, they have. Um, I'll never forget it when we played them in that uh, Rainbow Cup like thing where we played them in Treviso. And uh, damn, and I was like, oh, we have a decent team here. And next minute, they came and absolutely annihilated us. And uh, and then obviously we joined the URC properly. And yeah. Ever since then, they have been our little bogey team because it, we beat them at Loftus, but even then it was close, you know. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, a bit like you said, we'll take it. And I just think it was like a thing of um, uh, they they were very good at disrupting our momentum, you know. They were very good at like just being a menace, you know, if that makes sense, like disrupting yeah. our flow. And then at the same time, just sloppy 
rugby from the Bulls as well. Um, Menoncello was insane. And, and yeah. Rainer Smith, once again, bro, if they don't get Rainer Smith into that Italian team when he's eligible, I don't know what to say. I know Ange Capuasso is, is pretty good. Play him on the wing, play Rainer Smith at fullback. I think it's the obvious move. He's been sensational. He's been sensational. Mm. He has been. I mean, yeah, I mean, we, we, we keep talking about Bennett and being the side like, are they have are they gonna impress us or they're not gonna impress us and then they one week they don't one week they do weird team weird weird team yeah. but um but th- yeah, credit to for, them. Credit to them. yeah but this win for for the bulls was massive obviously now you're it's sitting huge, yeah. in, in in third on the log but a game behind everyone else right um not only not only that i think going into international break and getting that final crucial victory and you know it's a smash and grab and it's like we didn't play well, but we got it done. The amount of confidence you'll take from that one, perfect. Yeah. Anyway, 100%. let's go on. My team, my team, the Stormers. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bruh, I, 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 I don't know what to say, right? You know what, what, what infuriated me the most, and it's like a little thing. Glasgow score a try. They kick it over from the corner and we are all moving to the halfway line line. Everyone's just standing and and stumbling forward. Do you know who's the first person at the halfway line for the Stormers? France Malherbe. I don't think I've ever seen France run. How is he about 20 meters, 30 meters before everyone else to the half? There, There was no intensity, no intensity. Zero, like the sun was out, it was beaming, right? It was a hot day at the office. Dude, we are used to this. We are we play, we live in Cape Town. We are used to eat. You cannot use that as an excuse to, to Glasgow. They live in Scotland. They don't see the sun. Exactly. Yeah. Bro, exactly. if they don't have the sun on their jersey, there's no sun there. <laughs> yep, that's true. Um this was an embarrassing performance. Like, it's not that we played shockingly, 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 right? But the amount of chances that we had and stuff in 60 minutes, the score was still um 14 14, I think. Or it could have been 17 14 for us or something. It was close. Yeah. Yeah. And then they just ran away with it. The soft tries, ridiculous. Yeah. Offloading <laughs> every single ball. Why why we nothing goes into contact? It's like we we try to be Fiji. And we're all floating and all floating and all floating. Then we throw the ball away. They just steam it back. Counter attack. Ridiculous. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. So, so uh, I want to raise this. Obviously, Bulls, maybe this game, they actually lifted their game in the last 20 or so minutes. But are we seeing a theme here? I don't know if you could agree with this, where Stormers, Bulls, and Sharks, even though they're doing well, and Sharks, though, where the last just 15 to 20 minutes, we tend to just lay off the, the pedal a bit and we start letting in unnecessary tries and unnecessary, you know, because like you said, it was close and then Glasgow go and and, and, and take it away. Um, same with the Bulls. We could be far in front and we'll end up just winning the game because we let them in like that. Sharks, they did it with Glasgow and Munster, let them in at the end. So I just yeah, feel but like... I, I the, think they lay, off the, they lay off the pedal when they are far, far in front, right? And then they make it close. Like, it's just a bit of complacency. But the, how can you lay off the pedal yeah, when the no, game is you. literally in the balance? It's... Uh, I don't know. Because I, 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 I put it on the group. I, I literally said, like... Because after the Bulls' performance and then Stormers, I was literally like, sometimes I genuinely worry for our franchises. Like, what goes on? that this is you know the case you know because we have such a good talent a, a pool of talent and and i would say we have pretty competent coaches but like there's just something not working there um i feel like we aren't as dominant as we should be necessarily and i'm not taking really, credit i can tell you right. what the problem is the the problem with the stormers is you sell your quality and you try and replace it with people that you think might be good one day Whatever, bro, getting someone just from the Griquas or whatever is not going to fill the gap that someone like a Namakawa leaves you, the, the, what D- Daimani leaves you, right? Because we, we spoke about them being potential Springboks. You want to get a grab a guy here from the from Griqua territory 
and sell your main guys like it's nothing. You just think it's fun and games. You keep complacent players in. You play them the same thing. Like, listen, I love Job- Dobbo. I love the way that he plays and stuff. But some of the selections and stuff is just naive. How can we go for so long without buying a prop? Brock Harris is still playing. I don't have a problem with Brock Harris, but why is why is a 40-year-old Brock Harris still playing? How many chances yeah. do we want to give Dweber? Guy's trash. He's trash. Like, enough with the bullshit. Like, I know I've just all of a sudden started ranting, right? But it's passion for the game. Like, what what is the what is going on? How can you play a, 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 a fi- win the final, play a final, then quarter final, and all of a sudden you're the worst team of the franchises? Like, it's not a steady drop off. It's a clear drop off. Well, we kind of saw it last season coming, but now it's there, and there's nothing being done. You know what we do to to combat it? Okay, we're going to sign a contract with the Greek and we're going to sell our best players. We're not going to do fuck all to, to to help ourselves get out of a rut. We'll just let our biggest rivals, the Bulls, buy our best players. That's fun. It's ridiculous. Yeah. And then it's... we're going to extort our own fans by letting them pay extreme amounts of money just to go and watch it. Just to go and watch yeah, the man, shit show that you want to that you want to play. Yeah, it's. I mean, I mean, you, you're talking a lot of sense. I mean, it's. It's. I didn't expect the Stormers to be this poor, because, like you said, now they they had their they had their fair share of players come back. Or not. obviously, there's a lot of injuries. Don't get me wrong, and I think the injuries are hurting you guys a lot. But you you wouldn't use that as an excuse. I mean, we wouldn't because you still have a good side. Um, yeah, we we've got a good backline, right? But there's nothing in the forwards. There's nothing. Yeah, you look 100%. at that, bro. Yeah. Look at our forwards. Franz Lerbe is good. Ruben van Erden is good. Jody Schickeling's playing pretty well. Where's Ben Jason Dixon at the moment? I don't know. He's not to say. What, is, what has happened? Right? You look at the rest. I don't even want to name drop the guys, really. Right? But I'm just thinking, like, what is going on? Like, there's nothing in the forwards. Nothing. They feel it feels like there's no physicality and no intensity on the field. I was watching the game. The crowd was alive, Brevan. They did not they didn't play like a crowd that's alive. We spoke about how a crowd can carry people, can carry teams. That's why the Aviva is so, obviously Ireland's great, right? But that's why they've got this record at the Aviva. Like you don't beat them there. Because the crowds can carry you. Mm-hmm. Bro, Stellan Bosch was loud yesterday. But yeah, ex- like it's literally that student central, and us obviously watching it from from Joburg on 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 TV. That place was packed, right? It was to the bro, bro, and obviously standing on top of like the open stand, or you couldn't, you're not even allowed, yeah. but just everyone just came in. Yeah, and and the thing is, like they'll bring an atmosphere because that's what the youth of this country do, right? So. Yeah, the fact that that couldn't be felt in the game, I mean, just unfortunate. And, and also, like you said, just stupid errors and silly Mr. Handling errors. And, you know, like Marnie playing good passes through to Galant and then like Galant drops the ball. In, and I'm just like, it's the silly things like that. Yeah, I the mean, knock-ons, the stupid offloads and the lack of intensity in the carries from the forwards. Like, the t- can't throw in line-outs. Once again, but like, obviously, I'm never going to be that guy that will try and like tell a player that he's absolutely useless. Like, I'm not going to try and be that guy. But I just don't understand. I just did. Like, no, that that's cool. I mean, people have the can do what they need to do. But like, for example, Dweber. Like, I don't know. Under, I don't understand how like Andre Andre Hufenta is not starting over Dweber. I, I I don't understand. Yeah, but what Andre Hufenta is isn't playing well either. I get that, but at least we know what Andre Hukufenta can do. Where's my, Dweber, my, my like, is, Why is there no one else? Why, why, why is there not another hooker that we can bring in? Right? Where is these Griqua guys? Where's the Griqua hooker? Where is he? Where's the Griqua props? Know, bro. bro, I have not seen a single Griqua. What has happened to this contract? Have we sold our best players and then ripped up the contract for the Griqua team? <laughs> I do not know where they are. I've not seen a single one. This is the same team that literally played last season, except for J.D. Shikini. Yeah. Let, let's move on. Let's move on. Yeah, it is. What a beautiful way for the Stormers to send off our boys to, to international season. They better fix up when after this international season. Like, that, that... I know this is the defending champions. It's the defending champions. They are good, yeah. right? 
And it's not all doom and gloom. I don't think the performance was really that embarrassing. But this is like build up of the shittiness that's come through like over the over the past season and a half. Mm. So that was why I just let it out there for a bit. Because we should have won yesterday. But we bottled it. We threw it away. The soft tries and everything. You know, it's ridiculous. Anyway. Let's do let's do Lions first before we go on to onto the Sharks. Because Okay. I know I know they lost by 18 points. But the, the Lions are the real deal. I agree. Like I see a lot of people saying, like, for example, you know, they still lost by a big margin, etc. But I don't think people realize the Lions are like the handicapped franchise of this country, right? They don't have the funds that other unions have. They don't have the players that other unions have. They don't have the depth either. It's a very, like, it's it's not the, the franchise everyone thinks it is, right? Um, and... They are doing extremely well for themselves, and I think they can be proud of that performance because I've seen on another social media app Leinster fans trying to claim that they didn't play like a strongest team, etc., etc., etc. But I still look at that lineup and I'm like, you can't use that as an excuse. Like, look at yeah. your lineup, and yeah, I think the Lions. Honestly, I'm, I'm impressed because they've gone to Dublin, where most teams would have got battered by. 30, 40 points. They've won and lost by 18. And they were holding on for a long period of time in that game. Yeah, so yeah. So as much as there is negatives in the way they did some things, I still think they can lift their heads up and say, we have made so much progress and we can classify ourselves as one of the better franchises in South Africa at the moment. Yeah. So they're doing a good I, I job. I feel the game would be a lot tighter if they obviously played at um, Ellis Park, right? Yeah, for like, sure. And... Credit credit to to Leinster, right? I, I think Leinster looks like a different breed this season. They are a scary yeah. team at the moment. They, I can't think, and I, they, they might soon. go invincible this season. Like I can't, I just can't see who possibly beats this Leinster team, unless the Sharks somehow pull out their Gloucester victory um, type performance against them and maybe scrapes by. But I can't see this this Leinster team losing a game. And it feels like they haven't even really gotten out of second gear. They're just chilling. Mm. They're just running the show yeah. and chilling. Um, but that gives yeah. credit to the Lions as well. Um, I, Inke van Wijk, sensational. Mm. Absolutely brilliant. Um, yeah, I've, this was later in the evening. So just imagine how many stuff went down, you know, down the pipe already. Yeah. Um, how did Cade play? I don't think it was his best game, um, but like I said, circumstances matter. I mean, when 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 has Cade actually played overseas? Like, is this not his first time now? In like how many uh, years? He, he played one. Uh, he played one game that I can remember for the Stormers uh, two seasons ago. He, he played a, against. It's a, it's he played a against time, Ulster because I remember him playing against Dwayne Vermeulen for Ulster, but he played yeah. fullback. So. Uh, no, the reason I bring that up is because, as we know, South African teams, when they first started traveling, there was pretty much guaranteed a loss. Now it's a different story. We still do end up losing a few, but we can also win a few. And it's because the players are now getting used to playing there every season. And to go there and play as a, and you haven't done it in a while, like, it's not easy. It's a different atmosphere. It's a different type of vibe. And you're going up against Leinster, who are the best team arguably in the world or club team, right? They've there's to lose as well, where where, you know, they can those two sets of fans can have their argument, whatever. But I still think they are one of the best. And you're not gonna beat them ten times out of ten. You're gonna beat them one times out of ten. So yeah. If you're uh, lucky. It, yeah. So look, I I still think he's a great player. He didn't have necessarily his greatest game, but I still think he showed a lot of promise, which is good. And like you said, there were other players who stuck up their hands. Um, and they're a team that just doesn't say give up. Like, they don't give up. They don't have that attitude in them. So, yeah, I, I'm keen to see where the Lions take this season. Because if they carry on with this mindset and these performances, and obviously they'll want to fix a few things, I still think they can do some great things. So, yeah, not much more to say on them, to be honest. But, yeah, I'm impressed. Yeah, no, let, let, let's move on. I mean, I think we covered everything. Um, also gave our respect there to Leinster because obviously they deserve it. I mean, they are running the show at the moment. Um, yeah. Sharks versus Munster. 
and I want to give a lot of credit to to the Sharks, and we, we'll we'll talk about them in a second, right? But maybe it takes away a bit of the credit. It, can we still classify this monster now as a slow start, or is this just there? There's just nothing going on at the moment. Uh, I think they're having a bit of a storm in this kind of season, eh? I'm not going to lie. They've got good players, but it's one of those... But they look worse than the Stormers, and they lost to the Stormers. Oh, well, that too, yeah. Um, and, and when we saw the Stormers beat Munster, we kind of thought, like... You know, that was a turning a, point for the Stormers. Turning, turning point, and Munster aren't a bad side. But now you look at that performance from Munster again, and you think... Uh, and you start questioning things, and um, yeah, look, the sh Munster, I think, are struggling, and 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 that's no disrespect. Before people, <laughs> um, before Michael comes in the comments and says, "Oh, but they beat you in your own country," like, okay, we get it. They 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 used to be that team, you know, but this season they just aren't looking like the Munster we know. And I think, like you said, uh, can it now be called not be called a slow start because it's continuous and it's just not getting better yeah so and it I doesn't even yeah. look like getting better yeah that, exactly. that's that, that's my big point on it um but let, let's give credit to the sharks right obviously they've got all the spring box playing in that team so yeah a, a victory there was 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 crucial um i didn't manage to watch too much of this game but it looked like a dominant performance all around until literally at the end, I just saw Munster going in for for a couple of tries. But who was who was your standout performance for for this game? Grant Williams. Oh my word! Insane. Like he started, he got his opportunity to start, and he took it. Like he took it with both hands, and I think he showed Rassi, Plumtree, all of them. You start me over Hendrickson because I'm better, and I truly believe he is. Um, he got mad at the match. But they probably start Hendricks for the kicking games. No, I get it, I get it. But I'm just I'm a huge fan of Grant, and I, yeah. not that Hendr not that I'm saying Hendricks is terrible per se. I just think Grant is another level, and what he offers, like, is just his. I think it, what I was so impressed with yesterday was I saw a scrum off, genuinely not fearing or, or just going in with like I, I don't I don't have any schmuck about this, but just. And for those that don't know what Schmark is, it's just a South African saying for like, yeah, he was keen. Um, but he just went in for every tackle and he made them. He wasn't getting, and it was on props, it was on flanks. He was making his tackles. His attacking play was superb. And I just think he, the way he kept that game flowing was just superb as well. So I think Grant's had a phenomenal game. And then obviously. You say he's by far, uh, oh, by far the best nine in South Africa? I think he is better than most nines in this country. I think he's the best nine in South Africa, yeah. I think Ambrose is doing well, but I just think that Grant and, and Quibbis Reina. I know he doesn't play in South Africa, but I mean like Springbok <sighs> nine. I love Quibbis, right? And I and I think he's phenomenal. I, I've always wanted him to be our starting nine for all these years, since twenty eighteen, right? I wanted him to be our starting nine. Mm. Um but I just think he's getting to an age now where he's starting to drop off a bit as age does. And Grant is young. He's up and coming. He's he's getting well known in world rugby. He's taking his opportunities, and as we know, he offers the same speed as Corbus Rhinoc. You know, so you're kind of mm -hmm. getting a like for like player there. You know, um, in in a with with a few different uh, tinges here and there. But also, I just want to shout out quickly um, another player who was absolutely sensational was Vincent Tuchuka. Like mm. he was superb. Like. Next level superb. Like he made, I think he topped the tackle charts. He scored a try, um, charged down try. Um, his attacking play, his offload play, everything was just so good. Um, it's crazy how much loose I was, I was, yeah, we have. He was, yeah, I mean, I wasn't like. <laughs> okay, okay. You don't think he was great. <laughs> I no, mean... no, no, okay. No, he wasn't bad, but like it wasn't that I haven't ever. It wasn't something I hadn't seen before, right? It, it wasn't anything special. Um, so, yeah, I think he did well to fulfill that role. I still think he had a good game. He had good carries. 
Um, but other than that, I just think you, you, you kind of couldn't tell the difference, like between him at six and him at eight. It was, it was one of those. Um, yeah. So, yeah, look, he didn't do anything wrong. Nothing like that. Um, but uh, overall, the whole Sharks team just put their hand up. I mean, we saw Munster get annihilated at scrum time. Like it was getting yeah. ugly at a stage. And yeah, so... Well, that's kind of expected, right? They've got none of the, the Irish boys that can really go. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. But yeah, still, it was, it was a demolition yeah, well, job that there. victory, obviously, that, that gives, what's it, uh, the Sharks three three victories in a row? No, no. Ben Benetton was was after the dragon, right? Yes, yes. So they two in a row, three and yeah, four. Yeah, so sitting in sitting in in ninth with the with the game in hand, one point behind the Scarlets who are in sixth, right? Three points behind, for instance, Connacht that's in fifth. So yeah, think things are looking up for the Sharks. Obviously, if they can can have their big names there, then I mean, why wouldn't they be able to do the job? Um, yeah. Anyway, there was a couple of upsets this weekend. Uh, first and foremost, Scarlets beat Zebra. Not an upset, as as expected. Not going to really add anything to that. Just Scarlets are looking good this season. I've been really, really impressed by them. Um, yeah, agreed. Not much more to say on that, but uh, I agree. Yeah. But the big upset, in my opinion, and I heard this was an absolutely dull affair. Um, I, I I just I just saw like what a Scottish guy post this. Um, Osprey's beating Edinburgh, two, 22 points to 13. I, yeah. I wouldn't be as surprised as I am, but the Ospreys, I know they are struggling with injuries, and they've looked terrible after that Stormers game. And Edinburgh has been looking up again. Mm -hmm. like, they got smashed. I mean, it's only nine points. But, but still, yeah. you'd expect that... that uh... Edinburgh with the number of to... internationals that they have, that's that's going away now. Yeah, no, agreed. I don't think Edinburgh will be too happy with what's going on there. Um, and they must be careful, right? Because right, they they allow players. The Scots allow players from different. Where they allow their players to go and play in France and ex or in England. Yeah, Rochelle's in for for doing. Uh, they're going to lose some players there if this is the case because it's not the same thing necessarily where. The Sharks have the money to back it up and like say, listen, I know we did bad, but we promise we can still give you X amount and we will bring in X amounts of players to make the situation better. I just see Edinburgh kind of like, you could lose some players here if you're not careful because they can't, I don't see how they can make the situation better and I don't see how they can beat like a La Rochelle to lose um, a Prem team financially. So... Mm. Yeah, it's <laughs> they better pull up their socks because it could turn ugly for them. Um, but obviously, great win for Ospreys. I mean, they keep on righting some wrongs in in the season. Yeah. So yeah. Well, obviously they they were they were lost, and with that one victory, they've bumped up to above Zebra and above the Dragons. And I've been full of praise for the Dragons, yet they sit healthily in fifteenth, <laughs> second to last, where they always sit. And Zebra did last on sixteen. Like um, the the table is starting to sh to to shape up pretty nicely. Obviously, the storm is in thirteenth. Makes me want to throw up, but uh, I mean it is what it is. Let's 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 move on to to another upset victory. It cannot beat beat dragons. We expected that, right? It cannot yeah. get home as well. But this this was a good one, right? Because Ulster has been looking good, but they but they lost it lost it narrowly to Cardiff. Cardiff don't win by much, never lose by much. It's always a close one. Did it. 21 The Walsh points. teams are doing something. They are, The Walsh are doing, look, obviously they're not sitting pretty on the log, but they are winning some games, you know, um, against some decent opponents. Obviously, look, Ulster aren't the Ulster that they used to be, per se. Um, yeah. But... But they have yeah, been that's... looking good this season. Yeah, so this no, is a shock I, loss, I in my opinion. You you would expect Ulster to win that game in in all honesty, whether it's home or away, you would expect them to win. But like you said, Cardiff, I wonder that it's just that team like where it's like if you if you want to put it in Premier League terms, it's like a West Brom or one of those teams where they just like man, they, they like remind that, they remind me of Premier League like a Brentford, 
Like Brentford oh, has, has this thing of just like I don't know, making it tough, always making it tough. Yeah, that that's what that's what I mean. Like when I'm thinking of like old Premier League days, where like you know you get yeah, those yeah, teams yeah. that like you that you'd either beat them one 0 or they'd grind a nil nil, one of those things. Um, but yeah, look, Ulster will be disappointed in that, but um, look, Ospreys, let's see if they can build on that because they they they're winning some shock fixtures here and there. Um, but now they need to be a bit more consistent, I think. So, after yeah. we see. No, I, f- I, f- I fully agree. I fully agree. So obviously, after after this round, it's it's internationals now. So it's it's a bit of a break until is it end of November? Start yeah. So same? there's four weeks. It's second, tenth, seventeenth. Oh, sorry, second, second, ninth. We play on the tenth. Um, 16th and then the 23rd or 24th. Third, yeah, and, yeah, okay. yeah, and so, then that's when it ends, yeah. So, end of November. Uh, the table shaping up nicely. Um, you can kind of see where every, everyone's everyone's going. Obviously, it's still a bit tough with, with the South African teams play, play the game less. Um, but yeah, you Remember, can kind that, of that get game, the feel of... Uh, that game at hand is against each other. So our game yeah, at hand yeah, and your game at hand is against us and then Sharks and Lions against each other. So that will be... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that, it's, it's going to be spicy, you know. Um, yeah, but Leinster sitting in first, very comfortable, 29 points, just cruising. Glasgow in second, uh, 23 points. Bulls and Lions, uh, 19 and 18 points. Um, but they're above uh, Connacht and Scarlet and Ulster and Cardiff who complete the top eight. But you do expect Cardiff to kind of drop off a bit maybe uh, for the Sharks to come in. Uh, the Stormers at some point, I- I'm pretty sure the Stormers at some point will string a couple of victories when you're not when we're not playing the, the, the defending champions. I know it was very hard on them because I wanted us to win that game. But I think when we play at home and you play a couple of the other teams, we should get the job done. And at some point they... There will be a, a a string of victories to kind of push us into that top eight conversation, maybe. But you ex- yeah. I expect the Sharks to fully um, grow. I, I do expect Munster at some point to do something. Um, yeah, but you can kind of see where where, where everything's going. You can, you can make a solid top eight prediction from here. I don't know if you could. Eh? I feel like I think you can. Uh, I don't know. I just feel like it's a very. This is unless injuries the- come in, but. Yeah, look, maybe yeah, like I said, injuries is a big thing, especially for teams like the Lions, Carter, yeah. those type of teams. Do you reckon you know, the Lions drop off a bit because of fatigue, seeing that they, because they obviously benefit from it now, seeing that they played in the curry cup and stuff, but it's gonna feel like a long season for these boys that have played everything. Um arguably yes, but like for example, now um they am I right, there's no URC in the international break coming up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. That's a good break for. So these they guys. they're not even sending players to the Springboks, for example, and they're just going to have these players for four weeks, no game time, just training and recovering. So I think I see that as well. The, the players yeah. weren't good enough. It's, it's it's the Bulls and the Sharks that struggle. Oh, look, and that's the thing, right? You're going to have players coming back from the Bulls and Sharks, and then fatigue is one thing, but obviously. SA Rugby has this policy of like resting certain amounts of players for X amounts of time, as Springbok players, that is. Um, yeah. So I don't know when that will kick in. Whether I, And I hope, uh, I really, because obviously our derbies are coming up in December, right? Um, or, 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 or like a few of them are coming up in December. And we obviously finish end of November. Champions Cup comes in that first week of December. I really don't want to see... Um, like these Springboks rested per se in the, in those derbies against each other because like it is that is no no, no no not at all no it's like, not allowed that is not it allowed can't be it, like you you can't not put our best versus our best Bro, I you can't know? wait to to swear at at Alrich Lowe and Cameron Anukor <laughs> and I and I will scream Kurtley I well I can't scream at Kurtley because he's gonna be in Japan. Um, yeah, but uh, whoever, yeah. right? I can't wait yeah. to go out there and, and swear and be inappropriate and whatever. It's just part of it, right? Yeah, 100%. like you love these boys when they put on the green and gold, but this is rivalry. I know I'm just taking the piss there, but uh, you you want to see these guys go up against each other. Like I don't want to see, uh, yeah, let's not name drop anyone, but I want to see the Springboks go A to A, right? Like 
how cool would that be to see Damian Willems uh, going up against uh, free, okay, well, Dam David. Well, why can't I, can't I think of a, any form of co combination going up against each other? But you get what I mean. You yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Um, yeah. Even it's yeah. a bit a uh, Ruan Orkia line out battle. There you go. Yeah, exactly, man. Exactly. Well, anyway. So, yeah, like, like I said, they can't do that. But, yeah, I think quite a productive episode. I mean, 51 minutes. That's not bad. Yeah, well. We had a technical error at the start, which was about five. Oh, yeah. minutes. So, so what? Minus 30. one minute 13. Yeah. So, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> everyone, thank you for watching. Please do remember to like and subscribe. We do appreciate you guys. Have a lovely, well, week now because it's Monday for you. Bye bye. Cheers. Bye -bye.